Happy Melly Monday! In the past, I have made these 3D pictures by simply stacking painted papers on top of each other, and this week I want to step it up a notch and make one into this picture frame I found. To prepare the picture frame, I'm simply bending back these tabs and removing the backing as well as the insert and the glass. So I'm just left with the empty frame. I use the picture frame insert to mark out the size of my design and then I start to sketch out the main focal points. I want the foreground to consist of this cloaked figure as well as a few tree leaves in the corners. Then in the middle of the picture I would like a bridge to cross over a river. And in the distance, I would like a castle to be about here. I'm going to spend some time off camera just working on the basic lines. I'm also marking the border that will be covered by the picture frame, since every layer will be present there. Now I can start to work on the detail, beginning with some tufts of grass on this layer. Then moving on to some bushes on the next layer backwards. Continuing on to single trees and more bushes on the next layer, making sure that they are a lot smaller than the previous ones since they are considerably further away. On the last landscape layer, I'm drawing in a cliffside near the water and just a rough texture to symbolize a wooded hill, since it is too far away to make out singular trees. I also want the bridge to be more recognizable, so I'm adding a simple banister. as well as sharpening the corner of the bridge foundation. With the design complete, I can start cutting out the layers out of this heavyweight paper using a simple hobby knife. The first layer will be the sky, so I'm simply cutting the entire rectangle in one piece, using a ruler to get a straight line and doing a test fit on the picture frame to make sure I got the right size. Uh, the next layer will be the water layer, so I need to cut out a space for the sky to be visible through. But I'm first cutting it to size, using the picture frame insert since it has the right size, and I can also get straight lines from it. For the rectangular cutout at the top of this layer, I am measuring the placement of the horizon and marking it onto my layer before tracing the border with the picture frame insert and cutting out the rectangle. This completes the second layer. It will lay on top of the first one I did like this. Every consecutive layer will start by cutting it to size using the picture frame insert as a guide. This layer will contain both the landmass and the castle. I also need to make sure that the river is visible throughout, so I'm going to cut it at roughly these lines. To transfer the line I want to copy, I'm picking key points on it and marking their position on two adjacent sides, so I can triangulate where they are and connect all the dots to get my line.
I'm then going over it whilst looking at my design, trying to copy it as best as possible. And doing the same for the castle on the other side. It does not have to be a perfect copy, I just want to get the proportion similar. Once all of my interior lines are traced over, I am again using the picture frame insert to mark my border around the outside and then cutting out the space in the middle. Afterwards, there still are some pencil marks which I'm going to erase so they don't interfere with the painting later. So this layer is complete and it fits onto the previous ones like this, as well as all the other layers I did using the same method. I'm doing a test fit by flipping the stack of layers face first into the picture frame. They are a bit too close together for my liking and they don't take up enough room in the frame. If I were to add the backing now, the tabs wouldn't securely hold it in place. To fix both of these problems, I am using the scrap paper and cutting it into strips that are the width of my border. Then I am gluing them around the outside of each layer, doubling them up to be more effective. On the back layers that overlap more, I have also added additional supports. And doing another test fit, the stack is now thick enough to be held in place securely. And I also like how they are more separated to give more of a 3D effect. For paints, I'm using the trusty watercolor set I've had since primary school. Since I only need to paint the areas that are visible, I can test out all of my blue colors in an unused corner. I'm going to do a similar thing to what I did here by starting light in the background and getting darker towards the foreground. I am speeding up this footage quite a lot since it took me a while to get used to the colors and I don't really know what I'm doing too much. I just want to get a relatively even light blue and not completely destroy the paper in the process. And with the sky being done for now, I'm moving forward to the next layer, which is the water layer. I'm using the same color as before, just not quite as watered down. And I'm trying to get a little bit of a wave texture in here, which is why I'm going from left to right. I'm also trying to get as even a colouring as possible, making it slightly darker than the sky colour. Moving on to the layer with the castle, 
and I'm using the same color as before. I'm just trying to saturate it as much as possible and get an even coloring throughout. I should probably have used a bigger brush, but it's too late now. I'm also going around the border, painting the edge of the layer that will be visible in the final product. Moving on to the next layer, and I'm switching to a darker shade of blue, just diluting it a bit. Once again, try to get as even a paint as I can. Like before, I am again going around the border and painting the edge of the layer that will be visible later. And then coming back to try and even out the colouring a bit. Now on to the next layer and I'm using the same darker blue, just not diluted at all. And I'm coming back again to try and give it a bit more even colouring. Before once again going around the border and painting the edge of the layer that will be visible later. On to the next layer and I'm switching to an even darker blue. And this is the exact moment my camera decided to stop working. I don't know why, it's still got battery, it's still at memory space, it just stopped recording. Oh well. It's now a few hours later and I'm done painting. I came back through and even out the colors as best as I could, as well as touching up the borders and painted the last two layers a solid black. The layers are dry and it's time to assemble. I have washed the glass paint to get rid of all fingerprints, so I am carefully putting it into the frame without getting more fingerprints on it. 
Then I am adding the layers face down one by one. Oh, I almost forgot. I wanted to add my signature in this corner. Finally, I am putting in the back piece and bending down the tabs to keep it in place. So here is the final reveal. And that is it for this week's episode. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more handmade content every Melly Monday, and leave a comment down below with any feedback or suggestions you might have. I'll see you next Melly Monday.